I, I have two stories I have to share with you. They're not necessarily related to each other. However, each one of them is of tremendous importance, obviously. The well, first one is, at Shalashudas last night I asked a question, and I told someone that if he'd be here in the morning, he would be able to get the answer to the question. So, in regard to that, I have to tell you this, the following story. And what happened one time is that in Europe, a person traveled from city to city with what was called a balagola. Balagola is a wagon driver. So there was a rub who traveled from city to city, always accompanied by the same balagola. He had the same wagon driver that went with him all the time. And when they came to the city, the rub got all kinds of covered and everything like that. He came into the front of the shul, and the balagola sat all the way in the back. So one time they're going, the Balagola says to the Rav, said, can't we switch one time? That how about if we just, let's say, switch clothes? And when we're going into the city, you'll drive the wagon, and I'll sit in the back, you know, in the rabbi seat over there, and then when we come into the city, I'll be able to go to the front of the shul just once in a while to be able to do that. So Rav says, okay, Per perfect. I agree. We'll do that. They are coming close to the city. They stop. They change clothes. And the Rav is driving the wagon. The Balagola the wagon driver is now sitting in the back with the Iztala de Rabbanon. And he's wearing the rabbinical garb and everything. They come into the city. He, The rabbi parks as best as he can. After all, how well does he know how to drive? Anyway, he parks and they walk into the shul. The Balagola goes up to the front of the shul, the Rav goes and sits in the back row, and as soon as the erstwhile Rav, this apparent Rav, comes up to the front, people come over to him and say, we have a question that has been bothering us and we've been looking forward to your coming back. And we're so happy that you're here now. This and this is the question that has been bothering us. And he's stuck. But he says very quickly, you know something, that's such an easy question. Even my Balagola can answer. Why don't you just go ask him and he'll tell you what the answer to the question is. That's story number one. So anybody who wants the answer, really, it was a very easy thing. You could ask anybody who was in shul this morning for the answer to yesterday's question. The second thing is that, uh, welcome to Rabbi Steinberg, who is here, who voted down. I'm dressed like a Balagola <laughs> <laughs> who voted down here, <laughs> and we're happy to have him here. And uh, we share a blog that we read together, and sometimes we even write together. So something that was on the blog today, what it is, is that rabbis discuss various issues. So there is a question that came up, a rabbi who lives in a certain community in Canada, very far away. He lives, it's probably a thousand miles away from the closest community to him. There was a child born, and there's no moel in the city. So he wants to know what people's opinion, what should he do, what are the possibilities over there. There is a possibility of having a non-religious doctor do it. There's a possibility of perhaps the non-religious doctor setting up and doing all the preparation for the bris, and that the rabbi himself will do the chita, will actually do the cutting after that. And so he presents and he wants to hear what do people think about this. So somebody who wrote back, who I'm pretty sure had been the rabbi of that shul many years before, wrote back and said that his suggestion is that what the shul should do is to create a fund that they would bring in a moel, and it's one of the guarantees for the members of the shul that anyone who has a baby, that the shul will provide for a kosher bris, bringing in a moel from a large city. And the cost, he said, is probably 800 to to dollars but that this is something that would be borne by the shul, by the community, and would be a service for every member of the community. And he said, as far as the other suggestion as to the moel setting things up, and he, the rabbi, doing the chito, which is, by the way, I have done that, but not 
in the case in which there wasn't anyone, but it's just that at the bris of our, our oldest grandson, what happened was that the, there weren't enough kibbutim to give out. So it was either that or mitzitza, and I decided <laughs> I would take the chituch, and so I did that, and Baruch Hashem, everything's okay, and then I did it another time afterwards, and one time in San Diego, was I was getting a different child, oh. and, <laughs> and one time in San Diego, it got to be very late, and the mall was coming, and uh, had to figure out how late during the day, a bris has to take place beyond. Ashmini on the eighth day itself, so I had to figure out how late could it be and how long could we wait, or else I would have to do the bris and have it set up. Baruch Hashem, I trained a Moel, learned with him, and anyway, he has Kabbalah for Mila, so someone's able to do that now. But the issue was, should they have a non-from doctor set up the whole bris, and then the rabbi would do the chito. So the former rabbi said that he had discussed this with Reb David Feinstein, the son of Reb Moshe Feinstein, and he said, no, that they could not do that. It was not proper to do, because what would happen is, his words were that a takola would come from this, that is, a stumbling block would come from this, that what everybody would see is that the non-religious person is the one who did the bris. And the rabbi made some whatever stuff the rabbis do over there, and what would result from this is people would say that you can have a non-religious person doing the bris. And therefore he said no in the name of Reb David Feinstein. So therefore sometimes there are things which would perhaps be permitted, but at times someone says you can't do it because of what may result from that at another time. And just two stories came to my mind to share with you now. Thank you to all to have come for the yard site to help make the minion. And after Davin, there's a L'chaim and Mizonis.